Hello and yeah, the, vo the volume's still too loud. There we go. Hello there, and this is going to be my beginners to slightly advanced guide to Brigandine, um, the Legend of Runersha. So. I really doubt that there will be any beginners because this game has been out for a while and I'm pretty sure the most of the players playing this game are probably veterans from the old Brigandine. Um, so this is going to also kind of be more of a let's play than a tutorial. Uh, so let's just, let's just start. Uh, I need to check first because um, I've already finished some of the challenges. Uh, let's see. So I've done Shinobi, Manas Alicia, Gustava, Gaimul. So only Norzaleo and Mer Meralva is left. So I'm gonna quickly do a Meralva playthrough challenge run. So let's start that. Right. Go. I don't want to customize anything, I want to go with default, so... I always think that the default is how it's meant to be played, so I don't want to change that. Now, I've done a selection um, on my previous runs, and I want to do something different. Um, so this time, I want to uh, prioritize on Vikings. Because uh, previously, I was thinking Vikings were kind of crap compared to like paladins or champions uh, but they they have their own uh, special way of um, of handling the the enemy so I'm gonna do a paladin um, I mean a Viking Viking run so It kind of sucks that in challenge mode or in um, modes where there's a timer or uh, a time limit or a season limit, you can't really have um, the more uh, monster-based uh, builds. You can't focus on like a um, pure giant. Well, you can, but it's not as easy to do as just focusing on... Uh, a main unit run because you can only focus on one and when time limit is concerned and especially in challenge mode where after each season uh, turn the enemies level up uh, you really need to like have your units as strong as possible like there is no room for error in that sense and and because of that we really need to focus more on the primary um, leader units not the monster units although you can do the monster units, there might be a way to do it but for me right now I'm just focusing on the units that are you know that lead So he has uh, HP recovery B as a special. So he already has counter damage. Because he starts off as a Viking. And this one starts off probably as a fighter. Um, he already has double movement. So I wanna.
this guy can be anyone but when we when we're looking at vikings we're mainly focused on damage like this one for example his damage is pretty good this one not so much so if if you look at all of the ones that i've picked 139 damage 129 they're like really meant for a viking position Adieu is 118 so it's not so much we go with 106 let's go for the unaffiliate 109 I think this guy has high. Nope. Sad. Definitely not. I think Gallivard has high damage. 114. Nope. This one then. 120. Tommy will make a good Viking. I think Seth is also having high damage. I could be wrong though. Rance Rense? No. Sid? No, Sid is not so high. Delgan? Alsin, no. Gilliam, definitely not. Romanov, no. Cyrus, oh, <gasps> Cyrus, would you look at that? Now that is definitely Viking material. <sighs> Alan. Well, we've got our Vikings, now we have to get our clerics. These ones are essential in the Viking run because they will um, buff them up so that they will be able to hit and at the same time level up really quickly. So we need to look for the ones that have really high, uh, a really high mana pool. So Medessa is somebody that um, really, really good because besides her high mana pool, she has paral paralysis as an ability. This one has a really high mana pool. So mostly the ones from the Shinobi region, they have high mana pools. So that's really good. Sugar is also really good. Speaking of which, I probably should go to Sugar. From here, I think Ginger has... Yeah, really high mana pool for Ginger. Coco, not so much. Oh, not so much. Let's see who has a high mana pool. I think Selena also has a high mana pool. Really high mana pool. We're, we're going with that. So I'm going to skip the guide. I'm pretty sure there's probably a, a bunch of information that I'm not aware of. But since I've mostly gotten this far, I, I'd rather learn it from experience. So we're starting off. Um, so now we have to arrange because I usually f fight on the first turn. I don't do questing. Uh, so I'm gonna try to make use of the the units as, as much as possible now. So this one is definitely somebody I need to level up. So. Let's see the units that we can summon. I really want to have giants in my team as well. Because I really haven't done a, a run where giants um, or gigases were that um, used. So 
I'm gonna look into it later as the as the run goes. So in this run, I think I'm gonna need Pegasus more than uh, the nightmares. But that's not to say I'm not going to make use of nightmares. So I have to decide on the units. So I need to pick off the Vikings as well. It's funny, his class is a monk. That means if I turn him into a Viking or a Barbarian, his damage is gonna be higher than Guinea, I think. Or not. Nope, it's not. It's still pretty high though. Where's the other barbarian? So Guinea has the highest damage, which is really, really cool. So... He's three first. Because I really need to level up uh, Stella. The faster she gets to 20, the better. She's Leaders are usually the best units to solo um, against three uh, troops. Because they've got all around the best stats compared to other units. Can I have unicorns? No. Let's give her this. So we're not gonna see if come the units. We're gonna take all we can get. I need, um, yeah, so they are enchantresses, right? So we have to turn them into clerics like Medissa. So S Selena has to be a cleric. This one has to be a cleric. After we get their proficiency to like five, we can change them to minstrel. Because later on, um, a trobador with um, halo is still the better choice. So cleric, bar so clerics and barbarians is basically what we're, what we're gonna do. So usually people say, or it, it's not a good idea to summon on the first turn, um, but when you're going to fight on the first turn it's best to have all of your units have monsters if that makes sense then to not have them so but we have to really decide um you really need to pick the right ones so since there are only two forts that we can attack so we need at least six um fully decked or fully um um units like she has uh, her ma magic pulls almost full, as well as this three. So we, that's three down. We just need three more to go. But the the balance needs to also be um, clear. Like we need at least two barbarians or two um, clerics. So 
So I have to decide whether I'm going for two clerics or two barbarians on this team. I think two barbarians is better. This guy has the lowest damaging barbarian. But he also has the highest agility. Decisions, decisions. I might ignore him completely because his damage isn't that much. But we'll see how the game goes. So I'm going for two barbarians. I need Guinea and Hazaroff, I guess. So I just need 64 and I'll focus on Sel Selena because she has the most mana. 64 and 193. So first 60 I don't know if this will be enough it will definitely not be enough so that was a mana miracle and a fake mana miracle So I have two mana miracles, so that's lucky. And that's the best we can do at the moment. So yeah, we are good to go, apparently. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, we can mix and match somebody. Um, since you need... Hmm. So is this? All right. Now we go back. Good. Now. Yeah, that's better. It's funny because this dude has higher damage than Charlotte. So I might twenty nine. I might go with Cyrus first. Right. Cyrus. Guinea. Well, actually. One, two, three. Right. I took too long. Now I'm gonna do my starting save. Now, since all the other units are kind of not doing anything, you can opt to level them up and if there's like yeah this one yeah all of them have like bad outlooks so we're just gonna level them up so a uh, little tip when, when doing uh, questing for training so you can quest for like items but since they are low level they're only level one they can't really um, have um, they can't really, they, they don't have a good chance of getting items. So you could opt to save scum, but that's going to take hours. Believe me, I, I did it and it was not a fun experience. Saving and loading and, and loading and saving all over again. Rather, a lot of loads 
because it's very rare to get an item with level 1 units so we're gonna opt to do training grounds so what I'd like to do when uh, I'm training them is I, all the monsters that I don't use I give it to the ones who are training so that they will also get the experience not just the, the leaders themselves so in this case Charlotte when she goes training she's gonna train the others as well so that's really really helpful like Tommy as well the others are going to fight so so let's train the rest for five six so we need six people on standby so they can start fighting Let's save again. I'll probably end the video after the first uh, after the first two fights. We'll see what's gonna happen. So now that we've ended the turn, um, we can see the units that we are fighting against. So see if like mage. So we're fighting against Azor Illusion. It's not so bad because it's level 1. His defense It's not so high, but it's still a pretty um, difficult to fight. Because, you know, he has 850 HP. And he's got a, dam a really devastating AoE move on his um, first turn. So we're not... Uh, we really need to be careful, but usually the best thing to do when fighting against the Illusion is to focus on him first. Because he becomes really annoying as the battle goes on. If you focus on him first, then that will leave only two more troops. And it's not that difficult to focus on him, especially if you have nukers like demons and angels. Um, especially debuffers like nightmares. Or buff dispellers like um, mermaids. So... So, I think the captain, uh, Stella, can take on the, um, the Zor Illusion. He doesn't, uh, oh yeah, his agility is quite high, but if you corner him and, and like, surround him, he's not that difficult. And usually it's easy to surround him because usually he's the one going first at all times because he has two turns and you know so let's just see if we're all attacking the right yeah so let's start let's zoom The only thing that's bad about fighting Zor Illusion is it's actually um, harder to, f to level up because there's only one unit you have to kill. It's easier to level up if there's like multiple units to kill, but if it's just one unit, it's only one person will get um, all the experience. That's quite loud. So the usual setup, weaker units are in the back, uh, stronger units are in the front. There are exceptions to this rule, but right now we're not strong enough to use those exceptions. Uh, a ghoul, uh, there, there's the exception. The ghoul can be in the front because it's not really a costly unit. Even though they're not that strong. They're actually pretty tanky, especially when they become revenants. At level 10. But most of the time you just want to like get rid of them so you have to keep track of the number of hexes uh, of some of the units like between them like never ever go in front of an angel with full mana uh, two hexes um, because she's going to cast divine ray and you are going to be in a world of hurt if you 
if you do that. There again, there are exceptions. Like if you have a unit fully resisted, and he has enough, so they start they start out the fight. So that's that's good, especially when the leader goes in front. It's a lot easier to focus on the leader when he's in front. So usually you'd want to attack this. It's level one, so it's not that big a difference. But 72% is still quite low, and there is a really high chance that they will miss. So to circumvent this, we don't really have a unit that can go around. See, we need to be uh, we need a unit on the opposite side that belongs to us, so that we can have a really good chance of hitting. See, the chance of hitting is 96%. Because that's a danger usually has high accuracy. Um, but since it's the first turn, I guess it's okay. I mean, 72% is not so bad. So we can do something like this standby so that they don't take in the counter damage and then attack. Uh, luckily, it hit. So he's just waiting there for some reason. Um, we don't see m much uh, in terms of, except this one, this one's, but this one's a cleric. So she doesn't have, you can also check that the, by pressing triangle on the unit, you can check their abilities to see if they have the spells that you need to avoid. See, this one has divine array. You can see that the number of X's range is 1 to 2, so make sure you don't go within 2 units when she's got full mana. Unless she's silent, then that's fine. Um, the other exception is like disposable units, like Gontal. I mean the elementals. Especially when you're going for like a kill on the leader. Like the faster you kill the leader, the better. So it's it really depends. Right now, we are kind of in a hurry. So we're gonna just go for it. We can also focus on the angel, that's also an option. But see 57%, so we're not gonna wanna do that. However, we can do the damage on him, 89%. You can see the accuracy, critical rate is 10% chance. Power is like 85, that's okay as long as it hits. Or you can do something like this, like resist. So that he doesn't take too much damage. Go here and since yeah, the accuracy is pretty high, 95%. So that's fine. You can also set this up so that he's the unicorn is in range of healing. Should Stella need it later? 77%. That's gonna miss. So we're going for the Hydra. I mean the giant snake. Mm, another thing we need to pay attention to is, yeah, we can, like, a good technique is to, like, damage the units. We can even damage the leader in this case. But we're going to try to level up the Viking as fast as possible. To do that, we need to kill units and use Halo. So... If I damage this 86%, now he's within range, I mean, he's within the, the limit to, to get killed by Genie. And since he's going to get killed by Genie, we can now use Halo on Genie. So it gives him 100% accuracy on his next hit, as well as a bonus to his XP gain. Since um, killing a unit gives you a lot of XP, it's going to get even you know further boosted by that attack. So, so we were able to um, stun or cause the giant thing to faint. So unless I, unless he gets cured of faint or I, I hit him once, he is going to stay stunned. So that's something you can like. Um, abuse or if you want to like damage him now that's also an option but we're gonna 
We're gonna think about it. We're, we're not gonna damage him now. Still have like 11 turns, so that's fine. So we've been lucky so far. Now we can get the kill. Or we can actually kill Vayne. Which will give us more XP. So that's also an option. Um, which I think is better. Because if you kill their unit, they're going to run away anyway. So we're going to try to kill Vayne. So we're going to kill Vayne. And we're gonna get a big boost to our XP. So that's really good. So we're just gonna we're just gonna re rinse and repeat that as much as we can until we are. This one's gonna die. Why am I putting resist on him? Sometimes you wanna just spam the spells so that. They get like like we can put this one nearby. Then he's already having protect. So let's put that one here. Why did I get damaged? Let's try to see if we can go closer. So you can kill this one. To get even more XP. You can damage this one. So that I could Guinea can get the XP from, you know. So what do I do? Hmm. You could also opt to level up the Gigas. That's also an option. Yeah, let's go for this skill. Oh no, this is the problem now. This rampage is starting. Oh, need to heal somebody, I think. Yeah, definitely Stella. Because if Stella dies, then it's game over. So now we're gonna shift our attention to the Zor Illusion. Or not. The angel might still nuke us, so let's try to kill that angel as fast as possible. Hmm. I have to. I think this is better. Heal or give Halo to Kini, boosting up his XP even more. But since nobody is in the range of dying except maybe this angel, we kind of need to set up. Like, this is a good setup, but he's gonna die. So, let's see if he'll live. percent is really bad let's just level up sixty percent is also really bad 
And now let's try to focus on the Zorolution. Right, so now we can opt to kill the Cleric. Because I think it'll be difficult to kill the Zorolution at the moment. Hmm, let's do that. Also, I really want to kill the Zorolution. The cleric won't die unless I crit. Does he have another unit? No. Alright. You might be in trouble. Now you have to heal Guinea. Now that we have um, a unit directly um, facing opposite we can have a good accuracy against the angel. I still missed. Uh, typical. Yeah. We can try to go for another halo run. The problem with using Halo at this point is his proficiency is already maxed for for Barbarian, so it's a waste to level him up. To level him up. So we're gonna he oh not retreat. I'm gonna heal someone. Either we heal someone or we move forward. Decisions, decisions. He'll still level up after the fight because you get 200 bonus if you win. So it's fine, I guess. Mm -hmm. So now we can surround this guy. So we can kill this unit if we don't kill her she's gonna heal so she, there's a chance that she won't retreat so that's good so let's see if we can just damage this or reduce more see if we can cause him to faint we can heal Going to a castle is going to give me a hundred heal per turn. That's a good thing. Ah. I could have killed her. That's fine. We can try to kill the Zorolution now. Please be a critical. Good as done. So now we can...
please don't retreat. This level is five. That was a good fight. So we're basically gonna repeat the same strat and at the same time do some mini strats in between. So luckily we're at this side and not the other side. <laughs> so this is a very good very good opportunity to not screw up so again same strat Right, so the unit that we can kill here is the centaur because it's the squishiest. And we can also go for the dragon because they're level one. Hmm, let's go for the center first. Who do you want to level up first? I think Hazaroff. Let's let him fly. Oh, great. Now, what do I do? And she's fucking stunned! Wonderful. Nobody can heal her. Hmm. No, that was stupid. I guess I can go for this guy. Now we're in the range of the fli of the mage, so we need to use resist on the leaders, which is something I should have done earlier. Hmm, this one's probably going to die. We can up also to, like, go far, so we can focus on. The demon.
Good, it's paralyzed. I don't want the demon to die yet. He still has, he still has full mana. So now we can go for the demon kill or. A Griffin kill. Seventy-seven percent chance. Damage is only forty-three. Let's see. if there's anybody else he can use chance really bad chance to it though So it doesn't matter what they use silence on at this range because Wait, now we can do something here and target the unicorn. So this strat is so that we can go into position so that we can get a better accuracy uh, rate to hit Augustus. So like I said, um, if I hit him directly, uh, he'll counterattack and that will be a waste if I'm gonna get killed anyway so I opted to attack the, the unicorn while going moving into position so that's like two, killing two birds with one stone and, we, and all the units they leave behind we can train on them like we can Attack them like this, they won't counter attack, and that's good. So, it's a good way to like get imps as soon as possible. I mean, gremlins, because gremlins really do help like a lot. Here, we can just focus on felting them with aqua breath. I still have a lot of um, I could go for this one, for example. Please get paralyzed. Nope. Was asking for too much. It's too far. Now oh, this one I can do. So this is a good run. So 
So now they're probably gonna run away. See? So GG. So that's basically um, one of the best ways you can play challenge mode is to focus on getting as much levels on your main characters because as the turn goes by, uh, uh, as the as the run goes like, yeah, this is, this has been really really good. Also, the other guy gets to level up too. So now we can switch their class to a monk, so they can master that and get higher accuracy. So we're gonna make we're going to um, cross class them to benefit the class that we're gonna be using. Luckily, a knight wishes to enlist, and this is very good. And it is... I think she's a dancer. So that's it. That's the first video. And, and yeah, I get really good XP. So they get good XP. You can skip that. That's fine. I'm going to stop the video here. So thanks for watching. And hope you guys learned something from this video. Okay, bye-bye.